Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about five tips for avoiding getting email viruses, including things like ransomware, dangerous executable files you really want to keep off of your machine, but could come through something like email, and quite often do. So the first and foremost thing I always do, and this is like a dead giveaway for spam addresses, is that you check the sender of the email. Are there random numbers associated with this person's email address? Now that doesn't always mean that it's a spam email. Someone might have the uh, name like Jetspan42 or something like that. But if it seems really suspicious, like an incredibly generic name, a long stream of uh, random numbers off of that, or if it's at an email address that's unrecognizable, not even a Gmail account, but something like a a26.pi.com or something like that, then you really have to question, who is this guy? Why are they emailing me? Is this even a real person? And often it's not a real person doing it, but in fact it's uh, these spam bots, which will just try to get success by hitting as many people as possible and getting a few percentage of people to click on those links and mess up their computer with all sorts of nasty viruses. So always check the sender of the email. Do you recognize it? And if you don't recognize it, does it even seem like a legitimate email address? Um, is it like at Microsoft.com or is it at fake Microsoft.reallycool.org? where it's trying to fake being Microsoft, but it's not an actual Microsoft email address. Watch out for those kind of things. Secondly, the content of the email. So I've noticed that uh, in recent years, um, it seems like the email addresses that try to spam me, I've gotten, or the email content has tried to get a little bit smarter in order to hook you in. But in general, it's still written in very unusual ways. It doesn't feel natural. It's not what a regular person would come up with because often it's a spam bot. But it almost sounds plausible. Like you might get an email that says something like, we've browsed through the catalog of items for purchase, maybe it's houses, and we have three that we want to recommend to you. And all you need to do is click these links below to see the houses for sale in some place in Tennessee, I, I don't know. So, something like kind of random like that, that it sounds like, oh, well, this could almost be legitimate. Like, did I sign up for an, uh, an email list where I was looking for homes or something like that? Because that's something a lot of people would do, right? So it's easy to be like, huh, okay, maybe that was something that is supposed to be directed at me. And it almost sounds real. But then it just seems slightly off if you read through the email message. So if, if it seems off, if it seems too generic, then you should be a little bit suspicious of it. And I always question, is this something I even signed up for? Is something that I've been in contact with someone about? Because if it seems too random, then odds are it is just spam. So really try to be aware of those messages that sound plausible but could be directed at anyone, and they're just trying to hook you into the idea that you are one of those people who they're legitimately contacting when they really aren't. So in emails, uh, often how you get viruses is by downloading executable files, either that or clicking on dangerous links. Those are really the two main ways. Um, so if you see an attachment in an email, especially if it's an executable file, and just so you know, uh, compressed files like zip or rar could contain an executable file that's dangerous as well, so be aware of that. But if you see an executable file in an email and it's not from someone you sure you trust, be especially careful about that. Because if you download that and you run it, that's when bad things can happen to your computer. That's when uh, you basically launch a virus and bad stuff goes down. So executable files, really bad. Be aware of anything that's uh, basically anything but a JPEG or PNG image because you often have to question, well, why would there be any other type of file in this email? Like, why would a company be sending me an executable file directly, right? Um, so on top of that, uh, my fourth tip is going to be, and this is probably common sense, but just to be sure, uh, get an antivirus that scans files as they're downloaded to your computer. And probably uh, you should also have it set up to regularly scan your computer with a quick scan or a full scan at least um, once every few days or a week. It's really important that they scan when um, 
you download the files because that's when you're most likely to double click them and open them up. So antiviruses like Panda, which is what I'm using right now, a free antivirus, they will basically scan every file that downloads. And until it's checked the signature on that file to make sure it's legitimate, it'll prevent you from opening it. I think it's 30 seconds out of the box. But although that might be a little bit annoying, it's a useful feature. It, Preventing you from doing stupid things to yourself is something you want in an antivirus. So try to go for some product like that. There are also other good ones out there like AVG or Avira. Uh, I'll have a link to Panda down below. So uh, when it comes to links, the other really dangerous part of emails, and I think honestly, uh, dangerous links might be a little bit more common than uh, dangerous files because a downloadable executable file is a super obvious giveaway, but a link might it might seem like it's taking you to a nice site. So be aware of what the URL of a link you're actually clicking on is. If it says anything like a really long string of characters, it's not just straight to google.com or something basic like that, that's when you have to be a bit suspicious. You can also hide URLs with things like URL shorteners. So be a little bit suspicious of something like um, a, a bit.ly link, uh, for instance. Not that bit.ly's bad, but that Bitly can be used for bad purposes, basically by hiding the real URL. And then when you go to that URL, it redirects you to the uh, spam website or the one that's going to infect your computer, and that's not good. On top of that, for the URLs, the URL might be really nasty, but the title of that URL and your email might seem some like something really uh, good for you or something like that. Like it might say, like, click here for a free trial of Program X, but Although it says that's what it is, what it actually is, is a link that takes you somewhere else. So never trust a URL just based off of the title that they put there, because the title can be completely different than what the URL actually contains. So yes, in general, be wary of clicking on the URLs, be wary of downloading executable files, check the sender of the email address. That's really a, a quick giveaway. Uh, that you can use to kind of filter out most of the nasty emails. Um, if it's just an email address that seems completely odd, uh, odds are it's probably not something you're really interested in. And then you can also skim the, uh, skim the content. A lot of uh, email content is written by spam bots, and they're not good enough yet that where if you actually think about what's being written, they're not so good at faking being human yet. Get an antivirus that scans your files as you download them. It's an extra layer of protection. So that's going to be it from my five practical tips on avoiding getting email of viruses such as ransomware. Uh, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video. And hopefully if you guys like this one, uh, you can click to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.